Ender's making clicking noises, printers where the filament gets all curled up and not where you're expecting it to, and a Sovel that's having a couple of issues. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 94. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you are struggling with 3D print failures, we are here to help. Don't worry, but hey, if you don't mind, leave a like and get subscribed. We are looking for fan submissions. So if you are dealing with some printer issues and you want us to take a look at it, you can email us youtube at 3dmusketeers.com or tag us on the social medias. They're all linked in that description and we will do what we can to help make sure that you get printing as quickly as possible. I got some great fails for you guys today, so let's just jump right into it. Starting out, we have a supervisor who is, uh, well, a little curious as to what's gone on. Just a reminder to put bed clips on before printing. Yeah, if you have a uh, printer with a glass build plate, you definitely want to make sure that all of that is taken care of. We see this adorable little cat, like that adorable little cat, who is a little confused as to why there is somewhat sharp glass all over the floor. I've been here before. Oh, okay. This can happen to pretty much any printer with a really heavy build plate, specifically glass. We see this happen often when you do forget your bed clips, or if you're using the non-standard bed clips, which a lot of us use back in the day, which were binder clips, and you don't forget to fold the uh, bottom wing down and remove the top wing can actually hit the frame and cause the clip to slide off. I've never had failures like that back in the day causing way more damage than this. This is one of those moments that you're, y you realize what happened and you're like, yep, I'm an idiot because there is no easy way to fix this. You basically have to get a vacuum, vacuum up all that glass. And thankfully this is tempered glass. So instead of making just a few pieces in really sharp shards, we get lots of small pieces because of the way that tempered glass is under stress all the time like me. Just like how I'm under constant stress of this cat getting in the way of the videos. It's not like this happens basically every video. It happens every single video. Thanks, Andrew. Help, the cat's taking over the show. But I feel like that's what half of you want anyways. Now that she's gonna lay down in my lap, I can continue. Part of this is why we do recommend going over to a flex plate because a flex plate just sticks. It's a sticker that goes onto either your bed or if you do want to use some sort of glass and then put the sticker on it, you can. But having a magnet that holds your print bed down is a much better idea, in my opinion, than using a piece of glass. And the nice thing about a flex plate is that you can put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, and then, based on my knowledge, shake it all about. There is a value in being able to do that. Not only can you just have spare build plates, so as soon as your print is done, pull that plate off, put a new plate on, click print, but it also ensures that stuff like this doesn't happen. Those plates are normally made of spring steel, and that spring steel doesn't shatter when it hits the ground. It could potentially get a bent corner, but with the magnet holding everything in place, you shouldn't have that problem either. There are some benefits going over to a flex plate. We use Wham Bam flex plates on all the printers that we have here that we don't particularly like their stock build plates. We'll be doing a few more of those upgrades coming soon, so get subscribed if that's something that you do wanna see. And of course you can use code musketeers2022 for 10% off. Yes, it's still Musketeers 2022. I'm told soon TM. You got a glass bed. I've had this happen. You might end up having this happen. And normally when this happens, it is the impetus for going over to a flex plate. So potentially congratulations on your new flex plate. This happens no matter how I slice the file, what's going on. We've got a partial clog or some sort of friction in the extruder system. We have no information beyond the fact this is printed upside down. And we can tell that it is printed upside down because of that layer. So this is is all done on a support material interface. This is a very difficult part to print. I recommend potentially splitting it into a couple of pieces. In fact, the newest Prusa Slicer update 2.6, which we covered in a previous video, we'll card to it so you guys can take a look, has a great cut feature that would work perfectly for this. But this specific part has got some issues. We can see that we've got a partial clog here that is causing some problems. Now, it might be a partial clog or it could be some level of backlash in the system or and I hate that there's so many potential options for this. It is something extruder related, whether it's extra slack in the Bowden tube, it could be a partially clogged nozzle, it could be back pressure from too many retracts and de-retracts. There are a few options that could cause this, but I think 
let's look at cutting the part and reorienting it so it is easier to print and let's see if these problems persist. This is not an easy thing to print and no matter what printer you have, I don't think this is going to be all that simple. Now, this does appear that it is more designed for resin printing than FDM, especially because it looks like it can't be much larger than maybe 40 or 50 millimeters, which puts it in the prime territory for FDM. You could look at tuning in your support and your retraction settings, but I just don't know if this model specifically is really a good one to put in a position like this so that you're running with the right stuff. There are a bunch of settings that you could look at adjusting. Some of them will work, some of them may not. While we could look at really dialing in those support settings because I think that your contact Z distance is a little far, like it to be slightly closer, I think we have to look at our retraction settings first. That appears to be more of the problem that we're dealing with. This roughness is a contact Z distance issue. It's probably set somewhere around 0.2. With good, adequate cooling, you can go as low as 0.2 one or 0.12 and still have parts be removed relatively cleanly. So play around there a little bit. Normally we keep Z contact quite a bit further than 0.1, but all the time lapses that you see us do that involve support are always at 0.12. You risk the part welding to the support material, but often I'm willing to take that risk for a nicer underside, if you will. When it comes to the layer skips that we see, if it is a clogged nozzle, I can actually recommend going with today's sponsor, Diamondback Nozzles. Nozzles that are made literally out of diamond. Tipped in real diamond, polycrystalline diamond, but still diamond. Diamondback nozzles are quite literally one of the last nozzles you will ever need on your 3D printer. It can run basically any filament you throw through it because diamonds are not only a girl's best friend, but they are a maker's best friend as there's very little that will ever wear them down. There is some obsidian filament out there that is actually got obsidian in it. And I really want some because I want to see if we can wear through a diamond. Very curious to see if it's possible. But when you look at the quality out of a diamondback nozzle, you'll know why I really talk highly of this company. I was talking highly about them before they were a channel sponsor, but of course, thank you diamondback for sponsoring this video. And unlike your standard hardened nozzles or even your tungsten carbide nozzles, you do not need to raise your temperatures or leave them the same. In fact, you need to lower them. With the increase in thermal conductivity of polycrystalline diamond, we find that you're often lowering temperatures as much as 20 degrees centigrade from normal. This does potentially allow you to print more high temp materials without getting up near the thermal runaway limit of your 3D printer. Because some printers, when you hit a certain temperature, they will not go higher. And if for some reason they accidentally do, they go into thermal runaway. A Diamondback, make sure that you don't have to get that close. Made in America of some of the most ridiculous materials, Diamondback nozzles are incredibly strong. In fact, we have over 15 kilograms of some of the finest carbon fiber that 3DX Tech makes through it without any degradation whatsoever. And Actually, I don't think we've had a single clog on the 0.6 either. I'm telling you guys, these nozzles might be a little bit expensive, but they are absolutely worth it. It is quite literally the last nozzle that you will ever need. And if you want to pick one up, we'll have links in that description down below with a coupon code that'll save you a little bit of money when you go ahead and buy. But Let's get on to that next fail. From Discord member Devoid Colossus, he's dealing with some interesting stuff on one of his Sovel SV06s. And uh, I'm noticing, sir, you have removed the inductive probe for a BL Touch. It's an interesting mod. We should talk about that. I, I don't think it's necessary. I think the inductive probe works just fine. But he is dealing with some interesting issues. We've got some lines. For those of you that know about this line, you'll know that it is a common thing that we see on benches, where it's got a bow line right where the solid layers are for the benchy itself for that deck layer, I guess is what it's called in a benchy. It is an indication that there is some over extruding and the banding that we see here. I don't know if you can feel that. See, lighting can play massive tricks on you. If your filament isn't from some of the best manufacturers out there, the color might not be consistent, causing massive problems when it comes to something like this. It looks like we've got some pretty consistent over extrusion where it is causing some artifacting in the layers. Now the print looks clean other than just this one area, and I would recommend that we look at our infill overlap percentage, making sure that we've calibrated the steps per millimeter. And if that all doesn't work, let's look at changing the filament. This might sound really weird because most manufacturers have gotten really good, but maybe you've just got a bad roll that is out of tolerance for some reason that could be causing problems. With how good filament manufacturers gotten, even the cheap ones, 
have gotten pretty good, this is becoming less and less of a problem. So it's probably not that, but it's not something that I want us to just potentially ignore either. We can see that the issue is consistent across all of these prints and these prints appear to be the same style. So it's likely the same G code. We will also want to look at any of the flow characteristics that might be going on. Since this printer does have some modifications to it, and I'm not sure what beyond the BL touch, it is good for us to make sure that any mods that are done we're looking at them. Something that I'm noticing is that we also don't have a part cooling fan. I don't know where it went. Maybe he's running a 5015 and it's just on the backside, but I don't see part cooling in either of these photos. If that is the case, it might be that we're just getting some extra expansion where the other layers are instead shrinking a little bit. Not so much a possibility. I'm going to stick more with it to steps per millimeter game, but this one is an important one because there are a lot of potential problems that it could be. And we have to take a methodical approach of removing these variables as we can. The first one to me and the easiest is going to be the steps per millimeter. We want to make sure that we are getting 100 millimeters when you are asking for 100 millimeters. And because I know this can be a problem, you want to make sure on the Sovel, SV06, and the Plus that the extruder bolt to actually apply pressure is tight enough on the filament. It is common in the regular SV06 that it won't be tight enough and the filament won't always grab. I don't think that's the issue here, but let's start with that before we check our steps per millimeter to make sure that we're not just like randomly grinding filament. But in a case like this, I'm pushing for over extrusion. I think that's what it might be because otherwise the print actually looks pretty good. We've got some striations and I don't know if that is something that you can feel or if it's just color or they're very small striations and we have really rough top-down lighting. Lighting can play really rough tricks on you, especially with lighter color filament. At least this isn't white filament. Filament intake making weird sounds and pushing filament back. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, she's skipping. She's skipping. So this is an Ender 3 of some variant. It is an Ender or Crea... It is a Creality printer of some sort. This is an Ender style 3D printer that we're looking at. Most likely an Ender 3 just from everything that I'm looking at. It does still have the stock plastic extruder, which we will want to replace at some point because that arm for the extruder can fail and it fails pretty ridiculously. The spring applies so much pressure that often you will see them crack right at the seam line there. Why? it's because it's a failure point for this. And it is often good to look at upgrading your extruder. That is, however, not the problem that we are dealing with. We likely have some sort of nozzle clog or heat creep. If it is a nozzle clog, we need to look at replacing that nozzle. Maybe one from today's sponsor, if you're feeling like spending that much money on an ender, but hey, it's usable in other printers too, if you decide to upgrade. So there's that. And you would also want to be checking your Bowden tube. Over time, a non all metal hot end, that is one with a PTFE liner that goes into the hot end all the way into the hot zone, that PTFE will break down and it'll eventually get coated in plastic gunk. That plastic gunk gets into the path of the filament creating extra back pressure. Now, because this happened about 10 hours into a print, I am likely of two options. It is either the clog nozzle or heat creep. Heat creep is a possibility and is a pretty easy thing to figure out. If you can easily get to it, touch the heat sink, not the heat block. Don't touch this piece when it's printing. Touch this piece up here where the heat sink fins are. If that is really warm, it's heat creep. With a PTFE lined hot end, it should protect the filament but if it gets hot enough for long enough, that heat does get into the filament itself. What can you do about that? You want to look at your hot end cooling fan, not the one that blows on the prints, but the one that blows on the hot end. The first thing to look is to make sure that you are blowing air into the heat sink rather than sucking it away. Static pressure being what it is, a lot of these fans are optimized to just blow air rather than pull it. So stick with the pushing air on something rather than pulling it away unless you really know what you're doing and have run some CFD analyses. And well, I'm not going to assume anything, but I doubt that's the issue here. We have seen it before on previous episodes of Print Fix Friday where the fan has been backwards. And in fact, the first time it happened, a commenter caught it. So thank you guys for this because this is what I love about this series. 
sometimes I'm not right. While I might be down the right path, I might be missing a very obvious thing. So if you do have any comments about these, put them down below. And of course, remember, you can submit fails too. We love looking at them. We're coming up on episode 100. You gotta do something fun for that. Let me know what you guys would wanna see. But I would say if you've had the printer long enough, just replacing the Bowden tube in general is not going to hurt it. If your heat sink is hot, let's look at maybe upgrading the hot and cooling fan to give it a little more air across it. Sunun makes great fans, as does Noctua. If you're feeling a bit like a hamburger, Noctua people will get that joke. Nobody else will. And that's okay with me. But if both of those don't solve the problem, you're likely looking at the nozzle. You don't have to go with the diamond nozzle. Obviously, we like when you support the people that support us. But if you do want to, you can go get some relatively inexpensive RAS nozzles. There are other options out there, and please don't buy the cheapest nozzles that you can find. Chances are they're not milled with the greatest tolerances and are likely going to be cutting some corners to get the price down to where they become essentially 3D printer candy. Don't do that. Spend a couple of bucks on a nozzle at least, please. Because honestly, you don't want to have to keep changing nozzles. It's more work than it's worth. And if you're feeling like F it, I just want to upgrade everything. You can look at upgrading a bunch of stuff, putting in a new hot end, putting in a new extruder, recalibrating your steps per millimeter. There are so many options for a road that you can go down to turn an ender into a ship of Theseus. We were actually going to be going down that road, but I decided it's way more work than I want to put in because honestly, the amount of effort that it takes to get an Ender to print as reliably as something like a Prusa, but with the speeds of something like a Bamboo, it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of freaking work. <laughs> but stay tuned because we do have some upgrade series coming up, specifically with the SV06, the SV06 Plus, and the Flying Bear Reborn 2, all of which we've looked at at previous live streams. We'll link to those in the description down below. Filament gets stuck in hot end almost every print. What's wrong? I used to print this filament with no issues with the same settings. It started after I changed the Bowden tube, Ender 3 Pro. We've got a very obvious solution here. It is the Bowden tube. The Bowden tube is not properly seated into the hot end. So what is occurring here, and we can see it, we've got our pigtail of filament and then what looks like a plug. What is occurring is that Bowden tube is not tight up against the wall for the nozzle. So when the filament comes out, it's getting heated, it's expanding, and it's getting stuck. When looking at Bowden printers, you really wanna make sure that everything is seated. I'm noticing that instead of removing the Bowden tube, you're opting to just unscrew the coupler. If you do that, make sure that you're screwing the coupler in all the way as well. Often if you don't tighten that down to where it needs to, it won't seat either then you go through this weird issue of just parts not being where they need to be. When you are dealing with a Bowden system, we do like to see that you put in some sort of circlip to keep the Bowden tube connector, the white piece here, from moving up and down. That applies pressure on it, keeping the tube from wiggling. What we do also like to do is, once we have that pressure applied, push the tube in further to make sure it can't seat any further. This Bowden tube is not properly seated. And while I am glad to see that you are changing the Bowden tube, you gotta make sure that you're seating it properly. We can see some burning at the end as well. Might be time to just go ahead and clip that end nice and clean. And if you got one, a bright light looking down into the hot end might let you see if there is any schmoo or something down there that's keeping you from seating the Bowden tube the way that it needs to be. This one's a pretty easy fix, but a really easy trap for you if you're new to this kind of thing. And while it will eventually cause problems, you might see it printing okay for a little bit until it builds up enough back pressure to cause the filament to look like a big curly cue. But this will also be a problem when you try to pull the filament out because that filament plug will not allow it. So if you seat the Bowden tube in, life will be good. And I do hope that your life is good. After you leave a comment or two, like the video and stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. A lot of awesome fails for you guys today. And, uh, Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Also, huge shout out to Diamondback for sponsoring this video. Thanks guys, we appreciate the support. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can take a look at what we've done, how we've done it, where we've gotten it right, and where we've gotten it wrong. Right next to that would be our video all about Bamboo's one year in review. I actually like that video. I think you guys will too. And I will see you all in those comments and of course in the next one. Take care.